This is Bocas del Toro, a collection of tropical islands lying just off the Caribbean coast of Panama. It's a really cool part of the world made up of several beautiful islands, all with pristine beaches, super clear water. It's also got a really healthy nightlife scene. It's a very lively, exciting, happening place to be. And it turns out it's got some pretty fun waves as well. So in this video, we're gonna be breaking down everything you need to know about doing a surf trip to Bocas del Toro. So firstly, when's the best time to surf in Bocas? Well, unfortunately, Bocas has a really, really short season. So the best time to surf in Bocas del Toro is between December and March. Outside of the season, the place basically goes flat and it's like that for most of the year. So out of all the surf destinations in the world, this has one of the shortest seasons. And even during that time, you can still have flat spells like I've been here in January and February and it's gone flat like unsurfable for a week so it's definitely a fickle surf destination. Okay so on to the spots now there's a lot of different spots but let's just take an overview at some of the main spots. So firstly we've got Paunch. Paunch is probably the most well known and most frequently surfed spot in Bocas del Toro. It's an A-frame reef with a predominant left it's a pretty fat, really mellow wave. It's definitely nothing crazy unless it gets really, really big and it can get more powerful. But for the most part, it's just a really mellow A-frame reef. When the swell is a lot bigger, it can be good for advanced surfers. It gives like enough of a wall to be able to, you know, rip into it and do good turns. I'd say it's more of an intermediate wave for the most part because um, it gives you like enough shape and enough wall to like practice cutbacks and have some definition in the wave, but it's pretty forgiving and because it's one of the most accessible waves in the whole island chain, it is always, always crowded. Next up, we've got Caranero. Now, Caranero is an interesting one. It can be a really fun wave, especially when the swell's bigger. It breaks off Caranero Island, obviously. Um, it's a left-hand reef slash point break. Um, now, it's a really interesting wave because it's got two different sections. The top section is like a locals only wave, so, the locals are very, very protective over the top section of Caranero, which I've tried to surf it myself and I've heard so many stories of people trying to surf up there. So you're best off just completely leaving that to the locals. That's kind of their wave. But then just down from that is like the main wave and that's just a fun wally left point. Personally, it's not my favorite wave. It's quite fat and it's always, always crowded. Um, but if you're stuck for somewhere to surf when the swell is a bit bigger, it's probably your only real option. Um, next up, we've got Bluff Beach. Bluff is a really, really heavy shore break. I'd only recommend surfing here if you're an advanced surfer. And to be honest, even if you're an advanced surfer, you've got to be comfortable at, you know, taking off under the lip, like knifing under the lip, like pumping through tubes, like being committed in hollow, heavy waves, because even though we're in the Caribbean and it is generally a pretty mellow place, Bluff is a bit of an exception and it is really, really heavy. So if you follow me on Instagram, you'll see all of the little clips that I've posted, which makes it look like the dreamiest place ever. And it, it can be on its day, but it's also not an accurate representation of what actually goes on out there. So for every two seconds of tubes that you see in the clips, there's been an hour of paddling between rips and you know, dodging closeouts. Definitely not as dreamy as it looks. And it's one of the most temperamental beaches I've ever surfed. The slightest bit of wind or change in swell direction can just completely ruin it. So yeah, it is a really, really good wave on its day, but it's also not somewhere you can just go and rock up and guarantee yourself waves. Like that, that's just not gonna happen. Among advanced surfers and bodyboarders, it is a really popular wave, so a pretty crowded wave as well. Next up, we've got Silverbacks. Now, Silverbacks is a really heavy deep water slab. It's a wave that I want no part of personally, but if you want to charge and, and go and score that, it breaks off the corner of Bastimentos Island, um, and it hardly ever breaks, to be honest. I mean, out of the two months of my life that I've spent on Bocas, I've never even seen it break, so it needs a hell of a lot of swell energy to get working. And even then, yeah, it's a really hard wave to score, but but when it does start cranking, it's it's a phenomenal but absolutely terrifying wave and one that I won't be surfing anytime soon. <laughs> so I just want to interrupt this video to let you know about something really exciting I've been working on for a long time. Over the last year and a half, I've been writing and editing my first ever book. Now, writing a book is something I've always wanted to do. It's been a dream of mine for a long time. 
and finally I got round to it and behind the scenes, away from YouTube, I've been working really, really hard on making that happen. The book is a story of my year-long surf trip through Latin America. So it's got stories from Costa Rica, Panama, Nicaragua, El Salvador, Mexico, Peru, Chile, Brazil, loads more. And the book details sort of all of the waves that I scored, all of the waves that I didn't score, and all of the shit that goes alongside uh, long-term surf travel as well, so all of the stuff that went wrong. I hope it to be a funny but inspiring and also informational book that gives you sort of first-hand insights into what all of these amazing surf destinations around the world are like. It's going to be available on the 11th of May and it's going to be published on Amazon, so you'll be able to download it digitally to your Kindle or you'll be able to order it in paperback or hardback. So that's the 11th of May. You can pre-order it before then, which will mean it gets delivered to you on that day. So stay tuned for that. I'm really, really excited about sharing this project with the world. Um, but for now, let's crack on with the video. So where to stay? Now, Bocas can be tricky in deciding where to stay because you've got a few different options. Now you can stay in Bocas town, which to be honest, I don't really like. I'm not a huge fan of the town. It's it is quite lively and it's quite like a bustling place. There's a lot of partying, a lot of good nightlife there. But there's also the cheapest options there. So you've got like Twin Fin Hostel, a few other different options where you can stay for $10 per night. It's a $10 a night hostel, so it is going to be a $10 a night hostel. It's, it's not glamorous, but if you're on a super tight budget, I definitely recommend staying there. You can also stay at Selena, which is a bit more of like an upmarket version. They've got a cool co-working space there. It is quite a noisy place because they have a lot of parties there. Just check out booking.com or Hostel World and you'll find plenty of options on there. Or you can stay out close to the waves. Now, I've been staying at a place called Scully's House. It's in walking distance from most of the surf spots. You can walk to Tiger Tails, you can walk to Paunch. If you've got the legs, you can walk to Bluff, which is what I've been doing, but it's a really long walk. Um, and it's just a nicer place to be than in town. Like it's a bit more peaceful. You've got the beach right out front. You've got a little bar, restaurant area. It's quite a cool little hostel. It's really beautiful. The only downside with staying at Scully's is that you've got to basically get a taxi anytime you want to go food shopping or go into town or go to the breaks that are further away. So that's, that adds an additional cost onto that one but I'll leave the link in the description where you can check that out um, and then there's like more plush more upmarket places as well that you can spend hundred dollars hundreds of dollars per night it seems in Panama and in Central America in general there's a big difference between the dorm price and the private room whereas in like Southeast Asia that gap is a bit closer but here like I can barely afford to stay in a private room most of the time but hostels are still affordable. Um, so how to get to Bocas now? Getting to Bocas can be a bit of a mission. If you're coming from overseas, chances are you're gonna be flying into Panama City. Now the best way to get to Bocas is by flying. You can fly from Panama Albrook Airport to straight to Bocas. Bear in mind, this is a different airport to Panama City Airport. It's about a 25 minute taxi ride away and that'll cost you about $35 to do that little transfer. You can find flights for around $100 one way to Bocas. Bear in mind, you've got to pay $25 per surfboard. And I, I've never done the flight myself, but I think they do check. So if you've got three or four boards, you know, by the time you've done that, it, you've paid $200 for your flights. But the flight only takes an hour and it's by far the quickest and easiest way to get to Bocas. If that's past your budget, you can take the bus like I did. Now from Panama Albrook bus terminal, which is next to that airport, um, you can take a night bus from there to a place called Almirante, which is the closest mainland town to Bocas. Now this costs $28 and it takes 11 hours through the night, so it's pretty long, pretty arduous, but it's $28 to get that far is pretty damn sick if you ask me. You can't actually reserve that journey online, you just have to rock up at the bus station and buy your ticket and hope the seats, which is a little bit annoying, but it's the only real option. Um, and they leave at 7.30 p.m. and 8.30 p.m. every day. So when you arrive in Almirante, you'll then have to get a $1 taxi to the boat ramp and the taxi drivers will all be there waiting for you when the bus turns up. And then the boat transfer from Almirante to Bogus costs $6 one way. That's definitely the cheapest way to get to Bogus. If you're coming from Costa Rica, you've got a few different options as well. The best option is doing it by shuttle bus. Now there's a company called Caribe Shuttle and a few other companies as well that take 
travelers between cities throughout Central America, they're very, very common in Costa Rica and Panama. For example, this company, Caribe, take passengers from San Jose, the capital of Costa Rica, across the border all the way into Bocas, and that includes like your boat transfer, your they help with the border crossing and they make it into like a nice easy package. So if you're not confident, you know, crossing these borders off your own accord, you're not very good with your Spanish, it can be a lot easier and a lot more stress-free to do it this way. This journey costs about $80 and they usually charge $10 for surfboards. So it's not the cheapest, but it is a pretty easy way. Okay, so that leads me on to my next point, which is getting around, which can be a bit of a faff in Bocas because everything's kind of spread out. So if you want to surf different surf spots, go into town, staying at Scully's, you've got to travel around. And when you're here for a long time and you're spending money every single day on taxis, it's an additional cost that does add up. Taxis are really, really common throughout Bocas and it's probably the easiest way to get around. You'll see them all the time um, and you just flag them down from the side of the road. Between Scully's and town, it's around $3. It doesn't seem that much at the time, but if you're doing that a few times across a few weeks or a couple of months, it's a hell of a lot of money. You can also walk, that's kind of what I've did, but it's really annoying to walk. I mean, you save a lot of money, but it takes ages to walk to everywhere, like it takes an hour to walk to Bluff, hour to walk into town. So it's a hell of a mission. If I come here again, I'd probably get a bike. Like getting a bicycle would be a really easy, cheap and flexible way to get around. You can buy bikes in town. I've had a couple of friends who have bought them for like 60 odd dollars, which is really, really cheap. Um, or you can hire them for around $10 a day, which is again, not, not really that cheap. So if you're here for a long time, it's probably worth buying a bike. You can also rent quad bikes and ATVs and electric bikes, that kind of thing. But to be honest, they're pretty expensive. They're between 50 and $100 per day. If you, again, if you're here for a long time, it's not really viable. Um, I mean, if you're just here for a week, that's probably a really cool way like to get around having a quad bike. You can just nip between all the surf spots and town whenever you want. It's, definitely the best way. Okay, so just a couple of tips for surfing in Bocas. The first one is the crowds. Now, although it's on the Caribbean and you kind of think of it as this sort of mellow, like dreamy surf spot, it is really, really crowded. You know, Bocas is not just a surf town. It's a place that attracts travelers for the nightlife, for the diving, for the snorkeling. So all those people want a little piece of the surfing as well. It's not somewhere you can head and expect to be surfing on your own, it's just, just not gonna happen. That said, the vibe's generally pretty mellow in the water. There's a bit of localism that you've gotta watch out for, especially at that top section of Carinero. But to be honest, I'd suggest just avoiding that completely. And then my next tip is the consistency. So compared to the Pacific coast, just doesn't have the consistency. You know, we're in the Caribbean Sea. I mean, it, it still blows my mind that there's even waves here at all. It's not the most consistent place. I mean, you can get lucky and get a bit of a run of swell and you have a week or two of consistent waves but I've also been here in mid-Jan, Feb, and seen it completely flat, like unsurfable for a week. So in terms of food, I just cooked my own food the whole time I've been here. I've been spending between 50 and 100 US dollars per week on food, and I've been eating pretty basic, to be honest, I'm just making lots of baguettes, pasta, porridge for breakfast, making my own coffee. Um, so it's not crazy cheap, really, even if you're cooking your own food. Eating out can add up really quickly. I found in most restaurants you're going to be paying $10 to $15 per meal. That said, there are a few more local places in town where you can find like big plates of like rice and chicken and uh, salad for around five to seven dollars per meal, which, you know, sometimes I've been in town and I've just done that because it's really easy and you get a lot of food for that money as well. So finally, I just want to quickly break down some of the costs involved with a trip to Bocas. Now, they use US dollars here for the most part, so you're paying for everything in US dollars for your accommodation, for your transport, any activities that you do. Um, but just as a rough overview, if you were staying at Scully's, $15 per night, seven nights of dorm room accommodation will set you back $105 for the week. For food, let's say that's $100 per week. Um, and then getting around, I found that spent, I did a hell of a lot of walking. So for me, I saved a lot of money here, but I also walked for miles and miles every day. But I'd say generally you'd spend around $50 per week on your transport. So for living costs, you'd spend around $250 to $300 per week. I'd say you'd easily get away with especially if you're happy to stay in a dorm, especially if you're happy to cook and walk and get taxis around. As soon as you start, you know, staying in your own room and, you know, renting ATVs and 
the price like kind of skyrockets. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you found it super, super helpful. It's, it's a really cool place to check out. Just make sure you go in the right season and just don't expect to be coming and, and getting waves to yourself because it's just not gonna happen. Um, but yeah, any questions, please let me know. Please like and subscribe if you've enjoyed this video. For now, it's goodbye from me and I'll see you in the next episode.